Man, oh man. The beavers in this spot are absolutely decimating it. I'm gonna pick up a pastime that I used to do with my dad. It's been a long time since I did some trapping, uh, but figured it's a beautiful weekend, um, early December, and want to kind of get back into it a little bit. I've got some number five long springs, 330 conibears. bears. And there's plenty of sign to set them. All right, I just made me a, a beaver set here on this creek. They are coming up here like crazy to feed up on that bark. And what I did is I set a number five bridger there, clearing out this runway for them. And I've got a stake here with a, a drowning wire and I tied it off to that tree down there. If he steps in it and gets trapped, he's gonna wanna retreat to deep water and the slider rig won't let him get back up here. So it should take care of him. First time, first time trapping in a long time. I'm excited, hoping to, if I catch a beaver, I wanna tan it for the cabin, but also use the tail um, for a, to, to make uh, beaver tail ice ice bait this year for ice fishing. So that's that's the goal. I just set this one. I also set a cona bear just back there a little bit. So we'll check them tomorrow and see what happens. Well, I'm hoping that'll catch them. Nice run right here. And there's beaver poop all around on this dam. I mean, look at that. We should be able to come back and have one in there. If this ain't a surefire beaver set, I don't know what is. Bridger number five right there. Sliding wire going down for the drowning set. Hopefully I get them. It's been a while since I trapped. In fact, I think it's the only time I've trapped beaver without my old man. So, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I have a good feeling that a beaver tonight is going to come up here and go right in there. Heck yeah, baby. This is fun. I hope tomorrow I come back here and there's a big old beaver rotter sitting right there. I've been duped by him. Sprung the trap. Dang. Alright, I'm going to check my last three. I was so optimistic. I'm a little bummed that two of my three so far were sprung. Conibear was sprung and a foothold was sprung. I don't know. Hopefully I get lucky and connect on this one. Alright. Oh my gosh. Let's go. Let's go. Looks like a nice beaver right in the... I'm gonna go get him. Oh yeah, that's a decent sized beaver actually. Oh. Yep. Yeah, I don't think that's a little beaver. <laughs> that's a pretty big beaver. I don't have a scale, but he ain't small. Ugh. Holy cow. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. I have not trapped since I was with my dad in high school, so that's pretty special. Can't wait to call and tell him. Got this beaver back home and before I actually go ahead and skin it and I'm going to show you how to cut the tail off to make beaver leather and the ice jigs. Um, but before I do any of that I want to get a weight on this thing. So I've got my digital scale here. We'll see. At first I was like oh I don't know it's a decent looking sized beaver but the more I th think about it this thing's pretty dang heavy. <sighs> Not 
sure if that's showing up. 47.98 pounds is what I see. So we can say a 48 pound beaver. <laughs> Definitely a good size one, that's for sure. Here we go to go about and uh, remove the tail from the beaver. I'm gonna do that first before skinning it. In order to remove the tail, just cut all around it right at the base of the fur and the, uh, and the tail, and eventually you'll find a joint right in there. We're gonna use the tail for ice fishing bait, beaver tail, um, cut it in little strips. I'll show you guys how to do that. Might even tan this tail. Um, I know that sounds weird, but I might make like a wallet out of it. As, <laughs> as you can see, based on the knife I'm currently holding, I like to use all of an animal. It's just part of how I was raised. I don't know, it's a weird thing, but it's like I don't want anything to go to waste which I don't know why I'm embarrassed to say that. I guess I'm kind of proud to say that. Like if I'm taking the life of an animal, I'm gonna use all of it. Like this turkey, this turkey's leg and spur, like I think that's pretty cool that I epoxied a blade in there. And it, it's one more thing to remember that hunt um, and utilize all of an animal. So anyway, going around there, I'm like, gonna flip this thing now. And do the same thing on this side. Now eventually I should be able to find that there's a joint that kind of holds that tail on. There it is. Right through those that vertebrae. All right, so there's my beaver tail. And that's where I'm gonna be able to get the, the stuff for ice fishing bait and eventually skin that. So I'll pick this video up at that point. First and foremost, gotta take care of getting this guy actually skinned. All right, now eventually I'm going to be slicing this whole thing open, um, and I'll show that at the end of the video, but might have an opportunity to go do a little fishing today. So as a result, as a result of that, I'm just going to cut a quick little section out so I have something to give a, give a try. And it's going to be pretty simple. There's really no major strategy to it besides get a strip and cut it into sections you'd want to put on your hook. So I'm keeping it, this is stuff is really tough. So I cut a chunk off here and then I'm just gonna cut this into some kind of strips of various sizes. Some a little bigger, some a little smaller. Mix it up. might do some kind of like triangles to be able to have it a little extra finesse and I'll bring a knife out on the ice with me in case I need to make some changes but essentially that's gonna thread onto the the jig and I'll use the underwater camera we'll see what the action looks like down there I'm just gonna put it in my bait puck so it's good to go Next video, hopefully I'll be out on the ice. All right, got the compass cart. I'm gonna use this today. If you haven't seen the design of this, check out my previous video with it. Um, oops, I forgot to lock it into place here. There we go, I'm gonna load it up. It's got the rod holders on it. So right now when there's no snow on the ground, it's actually kind of a nice alternate to an ice sled. Don't have to drag it over concrete or anything, so we'll give that a try. Pretty slick, I'd say. Oh, sorry, little buddy. How'd you get there? Gonna just do all catch and release today. All right, well, 
I did some hole hopping off this these docks here with the underwater camera and definitely found some fish finally. So I think I'm gonna set up here and I got the recording going, so I'm gonna try to get some footage and eat of what that beaver tail looks like underwater on camera. All right, I've got the underwater camera set up towards my jig. Oh, almost just put my phone in the water. <laughs> but I've got that. But I've got that set up towards my jig. Oh, you can see there's a fish down there right now. So I'm gonna open up the beaver tail pick a piece out now this is the first time I've ever used this so I'm gonna just kind of thread it holy cow that stuff's tough that is very tough thread that on there I like to keep my jig horizontal and uh, let's see what happens I'll press the record button for you guys I'm sure that footage down there Looks good. Oh my gosh, there's a bluegill already. Oh, jeez. He's coming back. So apparently beaver tail just has an incredible scent on it. And based on what I'm seeing, I would agree with that. That's awesome. First drop with the beaver tail that I trapped myself. That is extremely satisfying. Just awesome. Well, I hope that's a sign of things to come. Holy cow. Let's drop back down there. eventually get more creative and you know cut a more realistic looking chunk this is pretty basic and so far I would say but it's working so far Ooh, there's a perch down there oh he came right he saw it I'm gonna pound the bottom with it make it look like a little larva coming out of the sand Lift it up and see if I can get him to go. Well, he's not really loving it so far. Maybe we'll get competitive. We got three of them coming in now. Four. Bull of a bluegill that just came in and thumped. Oh wow. Wow. Oh. Holy cow guys. <laughs> this is on the one chunk of beaver tail on my first drops. Absolutely epic. That is so incredibly satisfying to trap a beaver, use a piece of its tail, and catch fish on it. I love it. Man, I was all excited because I thought I was going to get my first perch on the beaver tail, but that big bluegill just came in barreling, kind of like this perch is doing right now. Come on. They're a little more picky right now. It's 
cool thing with the underwater cameras, trying to figure out what they want. So like, maybe I'll drop down and pound mud a little bit. Yeah, whoa, ho, ho, ho. that was cool. That's what he wanted. Here's the size perch I'm dealing with. Although that one right there on camera is definitely bigger than the one I just caught. Cameron, you can do it. You can eat it. Oh, you bugger. <sighs> Pound the bottom again, get them all fired up. Yeah, that looks pretty tasty there, doesn't it? That nice oily beaver tail. Come on. Come on. It's dead sticking. See if the scent alone can trigger the bite. It did. So there, I would, I would make the argument that that right there just goes to show that this beaver tail does something a little different than a plastic alone that would do. To have that scent make them bite even when it's not actively moving. I don't think I hooked that on uh, great, to be honest, either. I just have it, it doesn't even look that special. I have, I, I was real quick just cutting some random chunks off. As the ice season goes on, I'm gonna definitely explore with different ways to cut it and find like that perfect balance. I think I could go much more finesse with it. It's very, uh very strong and tough. I don't really need to use such a big piece. This would be kind of fun to experiment with different shapes of it. Definitely f stay tuned and follow along with the channel. You're going to see me using a lot of this throughout the ice season. Eat it the other way, you dummy. With that said, just want to say thank you to all of you watching right now, and especially those of you who are subscribed. It really just means a lot that I can do what I love to do, fishing, hunting, and just sharing my adventures with you, and actually uh, at least get compensated for it a little bit. So I appreciate your views contributing to that. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you enjoy the content. gonna have a battle here with that bass decided to chomp the beaver tail that would have made things interesting to say the least Just out of curiosity, 
I don't know if the time of day has slowed them down or what, but I've been using the same piece of beaver tail because it's, you know, so strong. But just out of curiosity, I'm gonna try to, look at this, I can hardly take it off. I'm gonna put a fresh one on and see if that gets them going. I'll use one that's a little, a little longer here, target some bigger fish, maybe if that bass comes back. Let's see what that looks like down there. Must be something to the. F I mean, maybe it just saw me drop there, but there must be something to the freshness. Man, that looks way better. Look at how that thing just moves in the water. I can't wait to smash crappies with this this winter. Man, the action of that is just phenomenal. I mean, look at that guy. Well, I've had enough. I just wanted to come test this out, see what it looks like on the underwater camera, and I am pleased to say the least. So, I'm gonna pack up here before dark. It was just a nice quick little hour here and um yeah this is just the beginning just hope for some colder temperatures so stay tuned thanks again for watching <laughs> here's the best thing about the compass cart into place good to go check the link in the description for more information if you want to get your own at a discounted price use that link i have down there